The one drawback, uh, other than that it can't do a boot it, uh, a, at the bootloader lo level with TrueCrypt, is that um, when you encrypt with TrueCrypt, you have to do it as an admin. In order to mount the volume, you have to be logged in as an admin. Personally, I don't like being, even on my own personal system, an admin user. Um, because n not that I am, not that there are any um, malware attacks that are rampant right now on the Mac, but um, you're more likely to accidentally do something as an admin. You could accidentally throw away you know, a calculator program because you're an admin, and so, and because I don't want any of my family to be an admin on their own systems, I want to run myself in that same environment and see what kind of issues I'll run into. So. So for data at rest, whole disk encryption, there's two options that I'm aware of, PGP and TrueCrypt. Um, as far as once you're booted into your operating system and you are at your file system level, you can encrypt folders of data, you can encrypt in, in individual files using any number of like zip utilities, there's, uh, you could encrypt disk images, that's built into Mac OS X using disk utility. Um, there's espionage, which is a, um, an automatic folder encryption utility. You double click a folder, it asks you for the password, and then it will decrypt it for you. Um, so, as far as like data at rest things, I think those are the big ones to look at. Um, so, over the, over the network data, um, you obviously have HTTPS, so anytime you hit any site that is encrypted using HTTPS, like your bank, your credit card company, anything like that, it'll automatically encrypt that data over the wire. Recently, Firefox had a plugin that was created that will allow you to hit any site, and if an HTTPS option is available, it'll automatically switch it over for you without having to do anything. It's a nice little plugin for Firefox. Um, when you chat with someone, and I wish I had you know, my, my system set up, um, but when you chat with someone, there, and I'm talking specifically about um, AOL Instant Messenger chat to start, um, using iChat or AOL Instant Messenger or any of the other number of chat clients like Adium. Um, there, when you, when you log into that server, it sends an MD, MD5 hashed version of your password to the server. And not that somebody could hack that, but I would prefer to, if at all possible, check that box that says log in to slogin.oscar.aol.com um, because that's the secure version of AOL Instant Messenger. It doesn't pass your password over the wire in clear text and any communications that you have with the AOL server will be encrypted. Um, as far as I know, the only standardized implementation of direct client-to-client -client chat is using Apple's Mac.com or mobile me service where you get a chat um, certificate and all communications between two clients who have those chat uh, encryption certificates will be encrypted between them. Now I've had a lot of problems with their their certificate chat um, encrypted certificate chat stuff. Um, if, you're, if your date, if your clock on your computer is slightly off things will fail if one person turns off their encryption halfway in between because they had some sort of failure in between a chat or if you just leave a chat window open over a period of a couple hours then all, all chats after that point will fail until both people log off and both people log back on and MobileMe requires you to pay in order to get that chat certificate stuff so not ideal um, the next best thing to um, fully encrypted chat using MobileMe certificates and S uh, secure logins over AOL Instant Messenger is using off-the-record messaging um, by cypherpunks.ca slash OTR, so off the record. And um, support for OTR is available in Adium, Trillium on Windows, um, Pigeon or whatever it's called now. I think it's called Pigeon. Um, so it used to be game and now it's Pigeon. Um, and the way that OTR works is um, the OTR client will send question mark OTR question mark to the other side and if the other side 
gets a response that says, here's my OTR fingerprint, that communication between those two parties will be encrypted. Um, the, you don't know for certain that you're chatting with someone you know, specific, you know that the communication has not been tampered with and that it is the same person you started chatting with at, that you ended chatting with. You can't identify their, their particular I identity. You know that only that they are using OTR, this communication is not being, in, is not being sniffed or changed in transit, um, and it doesn't use a consistent fingerprint, so um, the chat records are not recoverable without the original um, fingerprint. It doesn't use the same one um, every time. Is yeah. that still vulnerable, vulnerable to a man in the middle attack at the start of the As, change? Well, I think it's more vulnerable to, you're not actually chatting with the person you think you are. Yeah, well, I mean, um, a man I'm in the middle I'm not sure about the man in the middle stuff yeah. um, for OTR. I don't yeah. believe it's susceptible to man in the middle stuff. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay. But what I want to put out there is what the options are mm -hmm. so that people can investigate those options. Sure. Um, on Mac OS X, there is a, um, a proxy client for OTR that will um, that you can set up iChat to talk through that proxy. It runs locally on your machine, and then all conversations then go out to the other side. So you can use OTR with iChat, but not with the chat certificates from mobile me. So you can't combine those two things because the proxy in the middle ruins the the encrypted chat that mobile me provides. Um, until not too long ago, um, you could get free email certificates to sign your, all of your emails from thought.com and they recently discontinued um, their, their free uh, email client certificate um, service because they said it was too expensive, they couldn't keep it up the service level that they wanted to. So I don't know of a free version of email certificates. Um, you can get um, some from VeriSign. I think it's $25 a year. Not sure if that's worth it. Um, and when I say email uh, client certificates, I mean um, using the stuff that's built into the Mac OS X client, or built into Thunderbird, or built into Eudora, and things like that. Um, they you can always generate your own certificate, right? It's just it wouldn't be signed by anyone. Exactly. You can you can generate your own certificate, and the only drawback is that people will s when they send you email, it will say this has not been signed by a, an authorized certificate authority. But you can sign your email that way and there are instructions for doing that. I think that's a really great way of doing it. Um, PGP obviously has um, their uh, email um, signing technology that's compatible with New PG. Uh, New PG. Um, and the, the, the pay version of PGP and their email and IM encryption stuff <laughs> Is is not something that I enjoy. It's not something that I I paid for, and it was very expensive. And I really wish I hadn't done it now. I think that as far as what PGP's commercial offerings are right now, I think the whole disk encryption stuff is the only stuff that's worthwhile. Um, the other stuff, it acts as a proxy, both for your IM conversations and for your IMAP and POP email conversations. And I can't verify, because of the way that it acts as a proxy, that it's actually doing the secure communication using IMAPS or um, secure POP to talk to the mail service. It says that it will attempt to do it, but I want to be certain that my email password is not going over the wire in clear text. Um, for POP and IMAP, the, the password just goes over the, the wire in clear text. And so, I do not recommend for anyone that they do that they not use some sort of encryption on their email client. Um, there are multiple ways of hashing your password that don't use um, the secure IMAP or secure POP um, stuff using MD5 or Kerberos or different things like that. But um, for if if people are using just straight POP or just straight IMAP. I would recommend getting an account with Google, Gmail, something like that where it does support secure um, 
transactions for any time you need to authenticate because otherwise anyone that sees that traffic goes go by can just sniff your password. Um, speaking of, um, there's a really great program for Linux, Mac, possibly Windows, not sure, probably Windows, <coughs> called Wireshark. Called, uh, it's at wireshark.org and Wireshark will allow you to sniff any, email, uh, any network traffic that goes over the wire. Um, so if you want to do a search, if, if you want to, 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 to log all traffic that leaves your system and search for POP, for example, or just search for that particular protocol, um, you can see what that conversation between you and the POP server looks like. It'll say, hello, and then it will say who it is, and then you say user, and then we'll give you your username, it says pass, and then we'll give you your password in clear text. You can see it, go right there. And anyone that else might be on that network, or your cable modem, or anything, your, your wireless network at, at Starbucks or whatever, will see that go by, and it is so easy to sniff. So, no one anywhere, unless you don't use email, no one should use unsecure, unsecure POP or IMAP. Um, Although, if you have to, there are ways of getting around that by setting up a secure VPN server for when you're not at your home. Yes. So, um, thank you. Um, so, one way of, of encrypting all your traffic from where you are to another point on the internet, a secure point, is to set a VPN service. Um, there, there are multiple VPN providers using technology from OpenVPN, the open source uh, uh, project. Um, the one that I've used is called um, viscosityvpn.com, and viscosityvpn.com um, allows you to encrypt your um, all of your traffic to um, from wherever your machine is to another point on the internet. So, for example, you could set up an account using uh, vpnout.com. They will sell VPN service from where you are to their servers in, I think, Sarasota, Florida, or someplace like that. And then from that point, all of your traffic comes out of there to anywhere it goes on the internet. And they have different packages so that if you want to transfer one terabyte of data a year, they have a one-year package. They'll give you a VPN certificate to go into the open VPN software like uh, viscosityvpn.com and um, they'll give you that certificate. You log in to your VPN and uh, into their VPN and then any traffic that you send out will appear to come from their servers. So you could do BitTorrent and you could do any number of things and all of your traffic would not be traceable back to you. They don't record and their, their privacy policy sounds unreal. It says, we will not disclose your information to any third party. Is it possible for them, illegally, I mean, the feds want to, they could go slam the doors down so you Absolutely. Can Absolutely. So they do have a, a policy that says um, you may not use it for any illegal purposes. Um, and I don't know what people use BitTorrent for. I'm not really all that familiar with it. But I've heard that there are some nefarious purposes. So if you do want to transfer large amounts of data that may not be legal in your jurisdiction for you to just distribute, then using a VPN client like vpnout.com with Viscosity VPN or Open VPN client, whatever, TunnelBlick is another Open VPN client for the Mac. Um, then you can have all of your data encrypted. And so if you're at Starbucks, it looks, you're just talking to one server somewhere on the internet, and you get to pick which port you're talking to them on. You can talk to them on port 80. You could talk to them on port 443, like HTTPS. So it looks like you're just talking to a bank's 